Hello. So recently I've been trying to GM a lot more for group games and I wanted to get better at making RPG content. So I've started reading more books and I've started writing daily. But for writing daily, I don't really know where to start. I've asked a few people for advice and they've given really, really good advice. Shout out to Alex from Black Oath Entertainment and ZXU. But I think in the end, I wanted to incorporate solo RPGs into it somehow, because of course I do. I think solo RPGs are a lot of fun, but let's face it, a lot of the time, uh, the stuff that comes out of a solo RPG isn't immediately table ready. Unless you're playing an RPG that is meant for that, like uh, Big Feather and Bone, or Journey, or Artifact. But I'm not talking about those things, I'm talking about just a regular RPG. In this case, I'm playing Cairn and producing something that is immediately table ready or needs as little massaging as possible to get it to be table ready. I think it's quite fun to be able to world build as you play, but there were a few things that I had to keep in mind while I was doing this. So jumping right into it, this is the world that I have been creating. As you can see, it's not completely filled out yet, but there is some interesting stuff. This is the world of Carve. Um, Think of it as Fantasy Stalker if you've played that video game before. Basically, these three meteorites have landed on this island and are affecting reality and distorting the fabric of it in various ways. So I already had an idea ahead of time and I was developing this around that idea. But before I go into my process, let's talk about what I actually made. So as you can see, there's the three meteorites. I haven't decided what the magenta one and what the purple one does yet, but the red one is basically the meteorite of the red cephalopod. So that's basically red Cthulhu, if you will. My first character started here in this rowboat. Uh, it broke down and he came on shore. And uh, this is a broken down cistern uh, meant for storing rainwater. And uh, there was somebody hiding in here and he was dragged out and there's blood leading to the east. And here there are some black herbs. If they are prepared properly, they allow you to see in the dark, otherwise uh, they cause violent vomiting. Here you can find the layer of the creature that dragged the person from the cistern, and it's a rat with tentacles for a face. And it's giant, because, you know, of course. There's a bunch of other stuff here as well, for example, there is a statue of this praying farmer, and there's the town of Broughton, which is a former bandit camp. They've mostly given up their life of crime for a life of farming, but they still maintain their edge. They believe that the meteorites are a symbol from Abella, the goddess of rain, who this statue is dedicated to, and they believe they have to make a pilgrimage to the east. And as uh, you get closer and closer, things get crazier. Here is a swamp with blood red skeletons trying to drag you down under. Here is a giant raven who steals cows from Broughton. Uh, but they let them steal it because it's been like that for generations, even before the meteorites came down. Okay, so all that is well and good, but how did I actually make all of this? Okay, so this is how I take my notes. I do it in Obsidian. Uh, you can use any markdown or note-taking application you want. Uh, I have it divided into three documents. This is my reference sheet. This is the place where I take all the notes on the hexes. And uh, this is my character sheet list. As you can see, one of them is dead and he was eaten alive by the giant tentacle-faced rat. RIP. So my first tip is actually to make the character's motivations analogous to yours. What is your motivation? Your motivation is to explore the map, right? Find out new things about the map. Well, Nakata is formerly a soldier and Duel was formerly a poet, but they basically are cartographers in the lore of my game that I'm playing. They are explorers and they are trying to map out unknown regions. So it's good to have their motivation be the same as yours because their motivation isn't I want to kill a bunch of monsters and get XP. Their motivation is I want to explore as much of the area as possible. So you might be asking why I use the hex crawl instead of, you know, playing uh, theater of the mind or using a point crawl. The hex crawl just maps it out in my head spatially, right, where everything is. You can afterwards, of course, convert it to a point crawl very easily. 
um, you could hide the hex map from your players and just have it as locations. You can do whatever you want after the fact, but for generating out the world, I find that the hex map is the easiest because it gives me that kind of structure. So let's go a bit into how I actually make the hexes. Well, I have this specific setting, so I actually have this thing where I have four keywords for each meteorite and it generates six themes. And I have what's called a relevance die that I use to see whether something is related to the meteorite. But generally speaking, there's a lot of hex crawl kind of rules and tables for solo RP. Some good ones are BFRPG's free hex crawl rules, Scarlet Heroes. Uh, in this case, I'm using the hex crawling rules from uh, Cairn. I'll put the links to all of them in the description below. But I have listed here what tables I use for uh, each result. So I'm using Solitary Defilement, Perilous Wild Tables, Wilderness Explore, and uh, yeah, it's pretty basic. I do go outside of these tables. For example, for the town of Broughton, I use Worlds Without Number. Um, basically, use whatever you want. If you don't have any specific tool for hex crawling, I would recommend Scarlet Heroes. It's a pretty good uh, tool for that. And I believe um, there's a YouTube channel called The Basic Expert that covered how to use Scarlet Heroes to generate hexes. So I'll leave a link to that as well. But uh, that's not the central focus of this video. The central focus is how can you actually use those generated results in a meaningful way. So one of the things is connections. When I generated out this statue, for instance, right? I generated out a statue of something religious. Okay, so it's a religious statue. Uh, I rolled for a god. I got a god of rain. I gave a random name to it, Abella. And then when I got to the town, I rolled for a potential, you know, conflict and I got something religious. So I immediately linked it up to Abella and I linked it up to the fact that there's meteorites falling, you know, goddess of rain and stuff falling from the sky seems pretty close. So I kind of combined those. That's a pretty obvious example, but here's another one. I rolled on navigation tool uh, in this hex. Now by this point, I've already come through this route and I've already known that the tentacle faced rat was around. So navigational tool, I immediately thought warning signpost. So I went with that. The key is to link everything together. Make sure that everything has meaning and make sure that everything is interlinked. That way you have a world with very similitude and not something that is completely just random. So here's another thing, when your characters die, that's okay. I use Karen because it's very easy to whip up a character, but in general, if they die, that's fine. Like, you don't have to prevent your characters from dying. When Duel died by getting eaten alive in the cave, I just sent Nakata from this direction instead of uh, from here. And that way I could explore more of the map. Building a world this way takes the sting out of uh, character death. Your characters can die, but the world still lives on. Another tip that I have is to use your random tables only as inspiration. So when you get an interesting idea, run with it. So I got navigational tool here, and I turned that into a warning signpost. That might not be the first thing you think of, and that might seem a bit far-fetched for navigational tool. But in my mind, having an interconnecting link is far more valuable to me than following some arbitrary kind of rule that I have to stick to what the oracle tells me. What I'm trying to say is, don't be a slave to your random tables. Always go with what's more interesting. Another thing, you will always know more than your characters. In solo RPGs, player character knowledge gaps can be a thing, but in this case, try to embrace it. So I started off kind of knowing the lay of the entire land. I generated this map with Wataboo's Perilous Shores generator and then started adding stuff on top of it. And I'm gonna do the same thing for dungeons. I haven't properly made a dungeon yet, but when I do, I'm actually going to make one ahead of time by generating it out procedurally and then filling out the rooms as I go. That's normally not how I do things. I generally will create the dungeons from scratch. So the reason that I do this, I do that because jacquoying the dungeon or loops in a dungeon is very hard to do when you're, you know, generating one room at a time. 
This allows me to generate a few layouts, see what I like, and just take it and use it. So I'm placing far more emphasis on having maps that are better quality and more jequid over agonizing over hidden information as a solo role player. Knowing stuff ahead of time can allow you to make stuff that makes more sense, in some ways at least. So don't worry about the gap between player information and character information. If you're not sure whether a character will make one choice or another, I would normally just make it like a, a will check just to see whether they will be smart enough to do the safe thing. Remember that the emphasis here is not just to have fun, it's also to have a quality end product that you can have table ready. My final advice would be, I think, to take your time. This was made over a few days, so every day I'll just travel a few hexes, I'll have a bit of an adventure, but I will let it stew in my mind. Having those interconnecting links is important, but it's hard to kind of be spontaneous and be creative constantly for a long duration of time. So I tend to just let it, you know, simmer in my mind a bit, and then I come back to it with new ideas. And I think as a result, it becomes a lot more interesting. So I did just start out doing this, but I found it pretty useful. Every day, I have some time to write, and it sparks my imagination, and I get to have fun. Let me know in the comments what you think about um, this series of techniques. Not really techniques, more like tips. And whether you'll use solo role-playing to, you know, world build for your stuff as well, or if you have in the past. I'm having a ton of fun with it, and I'll definitely be uh, updating my progress as I go along, making the island of Karf, and making the dungeons. So yeah, I think this video has drawn on long enough. Um, I will see all of you next time. Uh, till then, stay safe.